so I don't necessarily believe in heaven and hell. I okay. believe there's here and there's the hereafter. Okay. That's where we're at. Um, I have never had somebody come to me and like, I've been thrown in the pits of hell and it's terrible and we're all suffering and burning. That's not how it works. Okay. Um, at least that's not from my experience. Have I dealt with absolutely terrible negative entities? Absolutely a thousand percent. Um, it's not quite everything's a demon, you know, very clickbaity paranormal shows you'll see where everything that's bad is like a demon coming to get you. Like, no, there's just really, I mean, there are, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say there's not demons. There are, but not every single negative entity you meet is a demonic force that's coming to get you. That's not what it's about. Dominique, welcome to Shifting Dimensions. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. So you're a death doula, psychic, and medium. How yes, did you yeah. get on that path? Um, well, I was born as a medium. I've been able to connect to the other side my entire life. My family realized that when I was very, very young, like pre-elementary school young. Um, and I was very lucky and blessed to have a family that was very supportive and didn't tell me, oh, you're crazy. You're just hearing things. They were like, let's go. Let's, and let's, let's dig into it. Um, and I believe that honoring death and that sacred time and space is just part of the evolution of the path. I, I really enjoy doing it. Um, my mother did end of life care for many years. And as a little kid, I just kind of got tugged along a lot and, you know, just part of it. I really enjoy it. I really do. So what is the difference between, I know you said that you were born a medium. So what's the difference between a medium and a psychic? I love that you asked that. A lot of people assume they're one and the same. They are not. Um, more often than not, mediums are also psychics where we can get kind of nudges from the universe about past, present, future. But if somebody is, is a psychic, that doesn't necessarily make them a medium. A psychic cannot connect to the dead. Okay. So they are different, but nine out of 10 times a medium is also a psychic. But a psychic that advertises as a psychic, do not assume they are a medium. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Cause I know that sometimes people call themselves psychic mediums. So and I know that a psychic medium is not necessarily a psychic. Like you said, they're right. two different things because all because you're a psychic, that doesn't mean you can connect with the people who've passed along. Yeah, people who've transitioned, yeah. Who, people who've transitioned. So how do you receive your messages? Like, are you able to keep your medium side separate from your psychic side or do they kind of bleed into each other a lot of times? Um, I mean, they do bleed into each other a lot, but not everybody, I have it set up on my you know, all my websites and stuff, you have the option for different sessions. A lot of people are not comfortable with death or they don't want to talk to the loved one. They only want a psychic reading. So I can turn that off and just focus on their psychic work. Now, if somebody wants a mediumship reading, nine out of 10 times, the psychic stuff's going to roll in with it because it's just kind of go hands in hand. Um, more often than not, a loved one that's going to connect with you is going to give you a nudge or a heads up about something in the future anyways. Mm -hmm. So it kind of goes hand in hand, but people that want just a psychic reading, we do kind of shut the mediumship off temporarily. Okay. There. okay. And do you get the messages from the psychic readings from your, from the person's angel spirit guides or higher self? Cause I hear that used a lot. People mm -hmm. will say, oh, you know, my angels told me this, or it's my guides or it's my higher self. So where, how do you receive your messages when you're giving somebody a psychic reading? Right. Absolutely. Great questions. Cause they're all so different. We are yeah. all, everybody in this line of work is very different. Um, some people work with angel got angels if that's what they want to work with. And that's how they receive messages. That's not how I receive messages. Um, I do believe we all have a spirit guide or spirit guides. And I've been very close with mine my whole life. He is not what delivers the messages. I've always, mm -hmm. um, he's kind of like, he holds my boundary in place. He's very good about if a soul wants to connect with me, he kind of helps get them to me, I guess. But as far as me personally, um, I, they just kind of, they just, they're just kind of there. Um, I will be walking through the grocery store and I'll get a nudge from somebody or I'll feel somebody and I'll know it's for that lady over there, like looking at cookies. Like I know it's for her, but I don't walk up to people in public. I think that's terrible to do. Um, but I will often get the sensation of their passing whenever I'm connecting to them um, I'll get like if there's a car accident I'll feel a really hard impact on my chest and my body will have to kind of process that um, so I get it physically and I kind of see it in my mind's eye as well yeah 
I have so many questions to ask about that. But uh-huh. before before we get into that rabbit hole, I actually do want to take a step back a little bit and ask what the role of a death doula is, because that's also something that you do. Right. Um, death doulas are just starting to get a little light like on them in the past couple months. And I'm so excited. Um, a death doula is kind of like a birth doula. If you're a birth doula, you help transition someone from the other side to be born into this world. As a death doula, we help souls before, during, and after their transitions from this human experience to death. That's mm-hmm. what we do. Um, I will talk to clients years before they pass because they want to set up a plan and they don't know what their options are. Or I will meet somebody like when they're already unconscious and I'm dealing with their family. It can, it can kind of meet anywhere in between, but we really advocate talking about what you want in your death. Like, what do you want it to look like? People don't realize they have options and we help them kind of set up a plan for them. And also we're there to support their families as well. A lot of the times in death, people don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. They, they're just kind of doing busy work walking around, or they don't know what mom or grandma wants to happen. And we help get all that in place before it ever takes place. And it takes a lot of the stress off the transition for the individual passing and for the family that's left behind. It, it really helps a lot. Yeah. So when you say, when you're working with people and you ask them mm-hmm. what you want their death to look like, are you talk, Are you referring to how they want to say their goodbyes, what they want to all put in their it. will? Like what is the all scope of, of all of it? Oh, all nice. of it. Um, I'm a big big advocate for something I call a death book and we're working on it. You're going to have, we're, we're going to have a template available to purchase mm-hmm. soon. Um, my, my adopted dad pretty much had a death book and I have a really dark sense of humor. You mm-hmm. will realize that I'm sure quickly, but he always had this little three ring binder and it literally was like on the front page of it was like a letter, like, okay, I'm dead. I'm gone. It's going to be fine. You're good. And you turn the page and it's literally walks you down, like call the hospice or call the medical examiner, the police, whatever you need to do, turn the page, a list of phone numbers that he wanted us to call these people, let these people know I have passed, Mm -hmm. turn the next page. These are all the people that have been taking care of my medical equipment, call them tomorrow and let them know to come pick it up. Everything from that to where, where do you want to die at? Not everybody wants to die in a hospital. I mean, I don't want to die in a hospital, but people don't think they have a choice for so long. People assume you go to the hospital to die or you go to hospice. That's not it. People want to be home and comfortable or in the mountains or at the beach or whatever. And we help them realize that's an option for them. Um, Before they're passing, we can help them. Like maybe they don't like flannel sheets. They're too hot and sweaty. So we make sure like, hey guys, when you guys are making the bed for your loved one or their chair or whatever, make sure you don't put flannel on there. It makes them hot. They're not comfortable. Little things like that will help the transition so much more. Our bodies know how to die. It knows how to be born. It knows how to die. Mm. But we want to make that as comfortable as possible, right? Um, Some people want like candles and music and all the stuff. But maybe you grab a candle thinking, oh, lavender's calming. But that loved one that's transitioning, all they can think of when they smell that is that cranky old lady across the street that always had lavender stuff around. And it puts them in, you know, they don't want to been the last bit of their life thinking of that um so it's having these uncomfortable conversations and just having them it's a it's just amazing um and afterwards we will help the families and the individual that's transitioned into death already we often help them just kind of work through it it's a process it really Mm -hmm. is Mm -hmm. yeah so just to make sure I fully understand right because Mm -hmm. there's some people who say that we can choose when we want to die obviously some people have accidental deaths and then some people know I, you know, they, they might have a terminal illness and then they know that at some point they are going to die. They are, they can, they know that they're dying. Their family knows that they're dying. And a lot of people don't know that they're going to die when they wake up that morning. So first question is, do most of the people you work with have a sense like death is coming soon? Do they have some sort of illness that's leading them that way? I'm sure you probably work with people who just want to get ahead of it in general, but do you work with mostly people who are sick and they know they're about to die. And second of all, what are your thoughts on we, you know, as spirit beings, we come and decide to be born here and we can choose, we already made a plan, like on this date, at this age, we're going to die. Right. I, I love you so much. I could talk to you all day. You you were asking the best questions. Nobody asked these questions. And I'm a firm believer, believer only because I've seen it so many times people time their death 
all the time. Mm -hmm. I have seen it happen more times than I can count, whether they're waiting for someone to get there or waiting for somebody to leave. Um, I, I promise you, I see it happen all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, I do believe um, that our souls, this is just my opinion, not fact. I believe um, our souls, when we are born into this human experience, this is, we are just souls having a human, you know, a physical journey, right? I truly believe that our souls already know what's coming. We've already mapped it out. We know what's going to happen. Now, does our physical form know that? Not necessarily. I mean, like you said, a lot of people wake up having no clue that today's their last day. Um, I, oh gosh, I, I love it. It's so great. You're asking the best questions. Um, but I have seen many times where people have waited until like their children show up or their children leave and like, oh, well, we're going to run to the store. We'll be right back. And they die that fast because they don't want a crowd or they don't want to upset them or whatever. I definitely think that is more common than not. We talk about that all the time on our social media. I talk about stuff all the time like that it happens every day. Yes. I love and that. I, I think there is truth to that because I think my grandmother planned her her passing because she had been sick for a couple of years. Obviously nobody wanted her to go. Then COVID hits and you know, she's, she's taken to the hospital. And I've always said my, she has such a strong spirit. I'm like the day my she grandmother, feels like it, she feels like she has a heart problem, not necessarily a breathing problem. She feels like it's in here, but it's not COVID necessarily. It's something else in her chest. Yeah. Really? Oh, okay. That's good to know because it, it, it I always like. felt like if my, when my grandmother wanted to go, she would kind of make that choice to go. And she probably, I always had a sense that the more we were around her, the harder it would be for her to let go because she wants, like, she knows we don't want her to leave. Right. right. But she has been, she had been ready for a while, but I think right. she was just, you know, buying time because of what was going on. So I think she needed to separate herself from us a little bit. <laughs> I've right. always suspected that. Thousand percent, a thousand percent. I see it happen all the time. I'm, it's just crazy. I see it happen all the time. Yeah. Um, my dad, when he was passing, he was in the hospital and everybody's like, oh, he's going to get better. And he's like, I want to go home. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you're going to go home after rehabilitation. He's like, I want to go home. And I'm like, mm -hmm. noted, got it. Yeah. And we went home, got his house together and we brought him home so he could be at home. But like, like with him, like many others, he would wait till certain people left, whether he didn't want to have to deal with the reaction because of how big it can be sometimes didn't want to hurt them didn't want to leave them with the memory of that was the last time but yeah I'm a big believer in that I'm with their grandma I don't want everybody huddling around me I'm gonna wait till everybody's like gone and I'm like okay thank you guys very much it's I mean bow out gracefully exactly exactly so uh I, I think one of the other things I asked you as well like do you work with people who they don't know when they're going to die but they just want to kind of get ahead of it yes. okay. absolutely we've had like mother and daughters come in or fathers or like grandchildren with their grandparents and they'll hear their grandparents making a plan. They're like, well, what can I do? And I'm like, let's mm. get you a plan ready too. Um, that's the beautiful thing about death is we deal with everybody. Like nobody is immune to death. Yeah. And the more we talk about it, the more comfortable people are going to get, which is going to make it all easier for everybody. But yeah, we talk to people that are healthy and young and vibrant. And we talk to people who are terminally ill. Yeah. It's an equal opportunity conversation. We're here for it. Yeah, all exactly. Because one thing about, you know, not to make the morbid jokes, it's one thing we're all guaranteed for sure is that we're going to transition out of this physical world. And I believe we've transitioned many times because I do believe in reincarnation as well. So you, you bring up something interesting, why I'm fascinated by your work and why I really want to talk to you is because people are so terrified to talk about death. Like I talk about it mainly because it kind of helps me try to figure out or make sense of this world. So I think understanding that when we transition, we're leaving our physical body, but there's a whole other world outside of Absolutely. this world that we're in is very fascinating to me. But even talking about it too, sometimes kind of, you know, there's a superstition, like if you talk about it too much, then you're calling it in. Why do you think we're so scared to talk about death? It's 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 definitely a culture thing. I've definitely yeah. noticed different cultures around the world, it's very normal to talk about death. America is very weird about death. They do not like to discuss mm. death. They just, it makes them uncomfortable and people don't like to do things that are uncomfortable, but we don't grow if we stay in our comfort zone, right? Mm. We have yeah. to get outside of our comfort zone. And that's literally what I started doing a few years ago. Like I hate social media, but I use it as a platform. We have to get comfortable being uncomfortable talking about death. The more we talk about it, the more, the easier it's going to be. And I love that you're using 
you know, this is what you do. You're using your podcast to have these conversations. We have to get uncomfortable. That's the only way to to grow, right? Yeah. Um, so I love that. But it's definitely a weird stigma in our country, I do believe. I mean, there are countries that literally shut down the entire country for 48 hours to visit their loved ones. There's it's it's beautiful to me. I think it's absolutely wonderful. Um, like I have a friend that's in Rwanda and what they do when someone passes for seven days. After they pass, no one in the family works, does anything, and all that happens is the entire community will bring them food, bring them clothes, whatever, for seven days. After that seven days, it's back to normal. This is life. Yeah. This is this is part of it. Yeah. We're not going to, you know, it's just is what it is. I, I think it's wonderful. So the yeah. more we talk about it, the better. Yeah. I it's think not going to bring of, it in. Yeah. We're all going to die. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I think yeah. because, you know, especially a lot of like Western countries, especially in America, for example, we're so focused on science, right? So anything metaphysical or anything that has to do with life after death is just not a concept people want to tap mm -hmm. into, right? Because everything is so science focused, we need mm -hmm. to prove this, we need to prove right. that. So I think because of the way the society is structured, I think talking about death without talking about the spiritual side of it and what life really means on a metaphysical level, I think is hard to do, right? So they make everything like this is science-based. Um, right. So I, I agree with what you're saying. And I wonder in your work, right? So people talk about good spirits and bad spirits, right? So not only are you, mm -hmm. you a death doula, you're also a psychic and a medium. So do you ever come across, you know, human beings with, or entities that are have a negative orientation and how do you deal Absolutely. with that um so i don't necessarily believe in heaven and hell i okay. believe there's here and there's the hereafter okay that's where we're at um i have never had somebody come to me and like i've been thrown in the pits of hell and it's terrible and we're all suffering and burn. that's not how it works okay um at least that's not from my experience have i dealt with absolutely terrible negative entities absolutely a thousand percent um it's not quite everything's a demon you know very clickbaity paranormal shows you'll see where everything that's bad is like a demon coming to get you like no there's just really i mean there are don't get me wrong i'm not going to say there's not demons there are but not every single negative entity you meet is a demonic force that's coming to get you that's not mm -hmm. what it's about um but yes we do very much run across negative entities whether they were human or whether they are just spiritual entities two very totally different things. Um, they Some humans can just be very bad and that's just what it is. Um, but more often to, than not, when I run across human beings that transition that were very negative in life, yes, some stay negative. And that's why I have a, my, my guide's very good at keeping them at a distance because I'm not fond of them. And if okay. it's not safe for me, he normally doesn't let them get too close. I can feel them and I know they're back there, but he's like, unless you're ready to open this gate, we're not doing it. Um, now there are definitely negative entities that are get can be very dangerous. That's why a lot of people. I'm a huge skeptic. I don't believe 95% of the people that say they are mediums are mediums. I think that they are feeding off people's grief and trauma and pain, and it's terrible. Um, so always trust your instincts when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, there are definitely real amazing practitioners, but I don't believe in most of them. Um, but yeah, the negative stuff is very. It's it can be very dangerous. But again, I don't believe it's as clickbait as what a lot of the, you know, Hollywood stuff makes it out to be. It's not as common, I guess. Yeah, that, that's a good point that you made, because I think I do believe that people really do have these gifts. But what makes it difficult is because there are a lot of people who take advantage of it. And it's very clickbaity. It's very like fear inducing. So how can someone who wants to work with a medium or a psychic or even a death doula, how can they tell when someone is kind of phony versus someone who's legit? Right. So as a death doula, I'm actually certified. I have a certificate. I've mm -hmm. I've done what I've, I've done the spiritual work myself, but I've done the actual logistic work and been certified. As far as a medium, I'm a firm believer that we all have a really powerful intuition. We're all born with intuition and you have to trust it. Our gut instinct has many lifetimes worth of experience that our human self does not. Um, that's one reason why you said you sent an email, my assistant, you know, she, she screens everything. Cause more often than not, someone will want a reading and they'll be like, Oh, I really want to, you know, medium reading with you. My mom died of cancer in April, 1992. 
Now, anything I tell you, you've already told me in your email. So I don't, I don't like reading for people like that. So I will mm. go, I do not know. I don't even know the name of the person I'm sitting down with before I have a session. It's just easier for me that way. Um, you can definitely tell by little things like that. People can, a lot of people can read a human, like you can read the facial expressions, yes. the way they hold themselves um, you, and they feed off of it. Just trust your instincts though. Even with me, if somebody's sitting down with me and they don't feel like this person's just not it, I'm not offended if they don't want to have a reading with me. I'm not offended at all. Mm -hmm. And any ethical practitioner won't be offended either. Yeah. Yeah. I've also heard that I think anyone that's very fear, they like to induce fear. Like some people will be like, you know what, this is happening. There's this entity on you. And for $300, I will, you know, do this. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do this fear um, everywhere. Yeah, fear everywhere, right? They want to do this like ritual on you and take it off. And it's like, okay, you're yes. asking for more money. And depending on if the person is in a very vulnerable state or not, they might actually they get are. scammed. And I'm sure a lot of people get scammed that way. Happens all the time. I see it happen all the time. And it breaks my heart. It really does. And it infuriates me because those of us that are doing this as a service, I believe in my heart, we are all here to be of service to mankind. That's part of the human experience. And when people are doing that, it's like, oh, that's bad karma. That's going to mess with you in the long run. Yeah. You will pay for that later in your own way. And I want no part of it exactly. at all. Um, exactly. No part of it. <laughs> Thank and, you. And, and speaking of karma, do you work with people through karma that they might have in their life? Because I'm sure as people might be preparing for death, something that might come up is that, um, I'm, I'm assuming, let me know if I'm wrong, something that might come up might be, well... I know I'm dying soon, but I'm struggling to forgive my mom or I'm struggling to forgive my dad. So do you work with them, not just to getting to the point of forgiving, but do you like do any sort of readings that tap into the karma that they might have with that person so that they can release it before they transition out of this world? Yeah, that's that's I love the way that you worded that because that's absolutely amazing. So I am not going to judge someone. This isn't exactly what you asked. We will get mm -hmm. there. But I will not judge someone if like they have a boundary in place. Like, I don't want to talk to my mom. You don't have to talk to your mom before you die. I don't care. As long as you are good with it and you're genuinely, you're coming out of a place out of true, I've made peace with it and I'm okay with it. You still don't want to talk to him. Don't talk to him. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to care. But I don't want you suffering and holding on to something that's going to hurt you in the long run. So really find out if it's an ego thing, if they, if there was actual harm done and don't get me wrong, I've been hurt in my life. We all have, but we have to find a point of letting go. My husband makes fun of me all the time. He's like, he's convinced the world mm -hmm. are the only reason we have the human experience is to have one big lesson in learning how to let go. And I'm like, yeah, I know I got it, but we have to learn how to let go. Cause the only thing we're carrying, like we're the only ones carrying that they don't care. They're not carrying it. Um, I'm a big believer in karma. I think that is like the number one law of all experiences is the karmic cycle. Um, but yeah, I will gladly work with someone with whatever the instance is with their karmic stuff that comes up. And I'm all about forgiving. You don't have to forget. You can forgive somebody and still want them to eat, but you want them to eat at a different table than you. Yeah, That's okay. I'm yeah. good with that. Yeah. Um, and I, I encourage people to be that way. Just make sure you're doing it and you process it for you and then let it go. Just let it go. Don't yeah. hold on to it. That's just to hold on to it. That's not yeah. what we're about. Yeah. I, I like what your uh, husband said there about one big lesson of letting go. Cause I listen in my life, I'm constantly having to let go of old narratives, let go of, you yes. know, you know, the idea of like forgiving someone or pain or all of that stuff is like all constantly yeah. releasing all of that. Um, what is your take on reincarnation? I could assume that it seems like you might believe in reincarnation, but absolutely. what is what is your take on that? I absolutely believe in reincarnation. Um, as far as the letting go thing, I have a picture in my room and it's a picture of a woman walking through the woods and there's visions of her behind her as all her dead on the ground. Mm -hmm. And as she's walking, it's because we have to let go and let parts of ourselves die and relearn and stuff constantly, right? Um, but I'm a big believer in reincarnation. I'm I don't have any way to prove it. That's not, we can't prove that, but I've seen it too many times. I've read too many journals. I've had too many clients. I've read too many experiences where mm -hmm. things that just add up. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And more often than not, I'll be reading for someone and something about a past life of them will come forward. And I'm like, do you want to talk about it? Mm -hmm. Not at 10 times. I'm like, yeah, let's talk about it. I, I want to hear about it. 
And almost always it resonates with something in this lifetime that they have not healed up yet. And I think it's incredible. I'm just, it's wild to me how, what we don't learn, I think we're all here. We have work to do, right? Um, And whatever work we don't do in this life, we're going to carry it over. We have work to do in the afterlife and we're going to keep doing it. And it amazes me how the lessons that show up for clients with past life stuff for them is the same stuff they're struggling with now. And I'm like, isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. How your soul still trying to do that work. And I think it's so cool. I just, it's it's a neat thing to watch. Yeah, it is. Have you heard of Dolores Cannon? Yes. A lot of the work that she, she's done with her hypnosis, she talks about how a lot of people are stuck in a karmic loop, right? They are. Where it's, they keep reincarnating because they're not learning the lessons that they're supposed to learn, yes. which is frustrating yes. to think about because I'm like, well, yeah. if you keep wiping my memory before I <laughs> you know, enter this reality. That would be too easy. Way too easy, <laughs> right? And I mean, our souls know what's going on. It's just our yeah. fleshy part that don't get it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> we are. We are, we are. We are constantly trying to relearn and unlearn and relearn again and it's a constant it's constant in this life absolutely yeah yeah. there's um yes there's a movie men in black from years ago and again i told you i'm super geeky we are big movie people i love movies as well well tommy lee jones is explaining to will smith's character he's like it's amazing what you'll know tomorrow Mm -hmm. and if you go and watch that scene it describes like the human experience beautifully he's like 10,000 years ago, we thought, you know, the the earth was the center of the universe. You know, 500 years ago, we thought the earth was flat. And like five minutes ago, you thought we were alone on this, you know, in this galaxy. It's amazing what you'll know tomorrow. And it's so right. It's amazing the things that we think we know. And really, we have no idea. We have so much to unlearn and retrain ourselves and it's it's just part of it and I think it's beautiful yeah and I think it's so cool right and and part of the reason I started this podcast and called it shifting dimensions is because I feel like our perspective is always shifting and there's so much in the world that we don't know and I think it's very important to have these conversations I mean the listener listening to this whether they believe what we're talking about or not now it's in their frame of consciousness for them to ponder a little bit more like huh is there something else out there you know, about life that I need to pay attention to, or what can I learn about death in the afterlife or what that means to transition so that I can live a better life today, for example. So I, I love all of that stuff. And as you were talking, I was also thinking about this other movie called everything everywhere, all at once. Yes. I want to see that. so bad. It's, you need to. I'm not. Bad. You know what? I'm gonna stop there because I don't even want to ruin it for you. But so it kind of it, it kind of goes into the idea of having like reincarnation, but it's more of parallel lives rather than past <laughs> lives. Yeah, which is also something I'm fascinated by because in some of Dolores Cannon's work, she's the people that she's taking back. There's the insight that she's gotten is that a lot of times our past lives, because time doesn't exist. Time doesn't exist. I thought I was waiting to tell you. Yeah. Time doesn't exist. Reality is not like a thing. It's yeah. not what you think it is. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And and she she was saying from some of the, the feedback that she got from her sessions is that a lot of our lives are happening in parallel, if not all yes. of them. And they kind of feed times. into each other, which is mind blowing. It's fascinating. Right. Right. And that's the beautiful thing about this human experience is that our souls are having to be condensed down. Can you imagine our higher selves looking at us like, oh my gosh, like, it's like watching a toddler walk through like a bed of nails, like, oh my God, will you stop? Just stop. Stop what you're doing. Because, but we got to do it. It's part of this experience. Right. And um, I love that. I'm a firm believer that there's multiple realities going on and it's almost, um, like there's a kind of scene in a movie where the guy's like, okay, this is what's happening. So if a guy comes through that door in about 30 seconds, then this is the reality we're in. Yeah. But if he comes in that door, it's going to be this reality. And I firmly believe that's what life is like. Yeah. We're just, uh, we're, we're getting through it. We just got to get through it. Exactly. We're constantly like shifting the outcomes of the, the future of what it's supposed to look like. It's, it's very, very cool. And Sometimes, like when I think about this stuff, I can go down a rabbit hole and I'm like, oh my God, it's so much. But also sometimes I'm like, you know what? Life is not that serious at the same time because like, what is going on? It's All of balance. this is crazy. Yeah, That's yeah, balance. It's, it's That's balance. what it is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we do the same thing. We get down these rabbit holes and we're like, 
oh my gosh, this is like the secret to the universe. And then be like, oh, well, that's cool. Let's watch like something on Netflix. And we're sitting there like watching some stupid Christmas movie. And it's great. Like it's balanced. It's, it's balanced. It's balanced. I'm telling it. you, you need to watch, if you're a movie fanatic, if you love movies, we are. you're going to really enjoy that, especially with the I work that you do. I kept seeing the trailers and I was like, I need to watch that. I need to watch it. I need to watch it. And I just yeah. haven't done it yet. I yeah. need to watch it. It I was just such a it random down, so movie. Yeah, it was, it was random. Like, I think I just stumbled upon it and I was like oh let me check this out in theaters and I was like oh, my no zone. accidents yeah. no such thing as accidents either yeah. see you were supposed yeah. to see it exactly so speaking of we've been talking about a lot of you know things and and some lessons that you've kind of learned with the work that you've been doing I just want to dig into that a little bit more sure. what insights or what things have you learned since doing your work I know that luckily for you um, you were born with your gifts and your family accepted you and really helped to nurture that. So you didn't have to deny that part of yourself. So you've been doing this work since you were a child, but are there certain things that you, you recently, um, insights you recently learned over the years that you're like, oh, wow, I, I, I didn't know that. or I've never thought about it this way. Right. Um, I really love that every session I have with a client it's every single one of them. I walk like I walk into it as a student and I believe that in my heart mm -hmm. that I'm walking into every single session as a student to see what I'm going to learn during this conversation with a client. And it amazes me the wisdom that I get to experience that come from other people. And it's it's really beautiful. Um, letting go is definitely a big one. And I know whenever my husband listens to this, he'll be like, mm -hmm. but letting go is definitely a big one. Forgiveness is really big, which is a lot easier said than done. And a lot of people think if you forgive someone that, yo, well, it's fine. I've forgotten about it. We can be friends again. No, that's not what forgiveness is. It's about releasing yourself from that bondage is what it's about. Um, I think that's really, really important. Being present is very important. It's a really important lesson. A lot of the times we go through motions every day of like seeing the same people at work or our family or kids or whatever, but we're not really present. And I think being present is very key. We get that a lot with souls that have crossed over. And they'll come in to connect with their loved ones. And they're like, like their favorite memories are sitting on the floor playing board games. It wasn't the big $3,000 cruise they went on. It's, mm -hmm. it's these little things. And I think those are so important. And our life is made up of all these little moments are the ones that really matter the most. Um, be the friend that's super awkward and tells everybody you love them because you don't know when you're going to see them again. You, you don't know. Mm -hmm. And it's those little things. To me, those are the important lessons we've learned for sure. We, it really is. Yeah. Um, most of the clients I have, they have three really big, like, I want to know if, like, ones that have crossed over, not ones that are living. Okay. They want to know that they made a difference in somebody's life. They want to know that they were loved. And they want to know that the love they gave others, like, they did it right. Like, they, the people that they do love know they love them. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter the good, the bad, whether they had money or poor. Those are normally the things they want to make sure their family knows is that they love them, that they felt loved and that they made a difference in their human experience. Wow. That's, that's powerful. And it's kind of similar a lot to, I had a, a call with Vincent Tolman. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he had a near death experience and he came back with 10 principles of just guiding principles you let him know I'll do a reading for him for free. I'm in the process of doing a project right now with people that have had real death experience, near death experiences. Oh, nice. I okay. I can, I can make that connection. Um, you know, I, I can did. put you, you know, send an email and make you that send connection. Him my number. Yeah. Yes. No, he's <laughs> fantastic. His story, I've been listening to a lot of near death experiences and his story blew my mind. It's been one of the I, I don't want to say the best near-death experience because that was traumatic for him, but the insights Pivotal. that he yeah. brought back, mind-blowing. And, you know, the whole idea about love and, and being present are some of the things he touched on. And he also touched on the power of being authentic and living life, yes. a life that aligns to you and, and what you want to do. Yes, a thousand percent. Um, as you can see, I don't look, walk, talk, or act like 90% of the people in this line of work. And it's because I tried for many years. I tried to wear the the clothes that they wear. And I tried to use the big words they use and carry myself a certain way. And it was sucking my 
joy out of my job. Yeah. And then finally I was like, you know what, this is not it. And I stepped into my real authenticity. And now I show up in like a pair of jeans that probably have a rip in them and a shirt that has some kind of dark humor joke on it. And like with a nice coffee. And when I do that, my clients, I watch them like go from being tense to like them taking breaths, their shoulders go down, they relax. And when you give yourself permission to be authentic, you give everybody around you permission to be authentic. Yeah. And that makes everybody more comfortable. And when that happens, messages move much easier. It's so nice. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. I um, love this that. Is, this, is a, this is a great conversation, Dominique. And I can <laughs> just keep going and going and going. I think we covered a lot of ground. And usually I like to ask my guests about you know, one fun question just to kind of like, you yeah. know, close out the interview. And because it's called shifting dimensions, I like to ask, what have you recently shifted in your perspective? And it could be as lighthearted or as deep as you want it to be. Oh, gosh. Oh, my goodness. I'm always changing my thoughts on things. <laughs> I, I think expectations are a big one that that we really had to learn this year. Um, we think expectations are things that people are required to live up to. And it is the furthest thing from the truth. And when you stop having expectations for people, you're no longer setting them up for failure and you're no longer setting yourself up to be disappointed. So let go of expectations. That's a, that was a big one for me this year. That was a big one. Yeah, that's a huge one. Yeah, that's something I've had to learn too um, over the last couple of years, just having yeah. expectations for someone that doesn't mean they're going to live up to it. And when live they don't to- live up to it. It's like it's not soul their crushing. Fault. Yeah, it's not it's their not fault. Their fault. Yeah. It's yours. And I thought I had mastered that lesson a few years ago. And then this year I was like, I call them SATs or like spirit <laughs> aptitude tests. And it's like spirits like, oh, you think you've learned that lesson here. Let me give it to you. And let's just, here's a pop quiz. And yeah. when I got faced with, I was like, oh, you totally set that person up for an expectation. Yeah. And they didn't fall short because they didn't agree to set that bar. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it was wild. I love yeah. it. That so was much. good. Thank you, Dominic, for stopping by Thank Shifting you. Dimensions. Where can people find you if they want to work with you or get a reading? We are everywhere. You can just go to my website at dominiqueogorman.com. We are on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, all the things. We try to meet clients where they are. Some people prefer different social media outlets, so we, we're on all of them. Um, we are we're always, we do free giveaways once a month, so if somebody can't financially get one all they do is send an email and they'll get put into like our lottery we pick we pick a free reading every every month um we do all kinds of stuff we do expos um seminars death talks all the things all the things thank you thank you so much thank you this has been so much fun